the last verse, remain standing for prayer. Sing, sing in the Holy Ghost how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song with him we shall be. Praising Christ in ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, heart singing, oh, heart shouting, on that happy morning when we all Be sure to remember our evangelist, the service tonight. You know, we've had a lot of folks that's made commitments to the Lord and pray they'll keep those commitments and grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Would there be a special request other than what we already have on our prayer sheet? Brother Browning, would you open our revival service with prayer? Jesus. 
Jesus I shall see And I look upon his face The one who saved me by his grace When he takes me by the hand And leads me through the promised land Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be Let me give you an official welcome. It's good to see each one uh, in our revival service tonight. It's a joy to see each one of you visit us. And listen, we just count you as part of our folks. It's good to have each one of you. We would remind you our revival continues through tomorrow night. We'll be having supper here at the church at about 5 o'clock. So uh, everyone come early. And uh, we're sort of looking like soup, sandwiches, dessert. Generally, our folks... What, Sister Sue, the way they put it, it's like homecoming. Eh? We just said, bring, we just put it all together and have a good time of fellowship. We want to give Brother Pruitt a good sitting off. That supper tomorrow night is going to be you and Linda's honor tomorrow night, and we'll give you all a, a good send off. How about that? Can you handle that? Yes. There you go. There you go. And again, we appreciate each one of you. Do remember, Sunday's Mother's Day. Uh, make a special effort to be here. Uh, we have some, something special for all of our mothers. Also, we'll be remembering Anthony, one of our teenagers graduating from uh, high school. We'll have something special for him as well. And sort of keep that in mind. Memorial Day is uh, the last Sunday in this month. I hope you'll remember that. You know, we always try to remember special days like that, particularly so many of, I call them our heroes that pay the supreme price that we might have the great freedoms we have today. We like to sing patriotic songs and Remember their memories and all they gave in their service to this great nation called uh, America. Do remember our homecoming will be June the 10th, and we'll keep you abreast of all the other uh, as we go, go along. This time, Sister Linda is going to uh, sing for us. Sister Linda Bond, so we've got the right Linda tonight, haven't we? <laughs> I told we're substituting Linda. I asked the preacher if I could give my testimony about how God got how God has been so good to me. Amen. Okay, in Matthew six eight it refers to your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. My heart overflows, the grace he provides is just what I need for my care. It's all I could ask, whatever the task, whatever the burden I bear. God's timing is always right. I'm sure just about everybody in this church house knows my house burned on April the 22nd. I was at church. Some friends from the Methodist church came and got me. And it, it was just like my truck was going, but I felt like I was doing 100 miles an hour, but I wasn't going anywhere. And I knew that my grandbaby was at my house asleep on the couch. God had this all planned. He had his hand on that house and on me. Because that baby came out with not a scratch or a burn on her. The fire department got there. They put it out. Everybody has been a blessing to me, and I've done nothing but praise him since then. My church family stood behind me and taken up a love offering, and which I am so thankful for. And they have been right there praying the whole time. The whole community has been very, very kind to me. So now I want to talk about our heavenly home. I told... 
the pastor, I said, my home was paid for, and I'm 67 years old, and I'm starting over again, but that's quite all right. Because when I get to heaven, I got a mansion over that hilltop. I won't have a mortgage. I won't have any insurance to worry about. And it will be there provided for me with my Savior at my side. So if y'all want to sing along, that's fine. It's mansion over the hilltop. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want to go on that silver streets that all purest go though often tempted tormented and tested and like the prophet my pillow was stone and though I find here no permanent dwelling I know here I want a mansion, a harp and a crown. I got a mansion just over the hilltop with that bright ceiling where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder, we will never more wander, but walk on street. get over it but you know one day we're gonna climb our last hill and when we get to the top of it heaven's gonna be waiting and that's gonna be our reward <clears throat> and you know I know that I'm ready to go I know where I came from I know where I'm at and I know where I'm going so I'm a winner y'all pray for us <clears throat> thought we would have been dodging this. <laughs> we have a round robin here, whether you can sing or not, you get on the list. And, and you can't get off of and, uh, it. I've tried. <laughs> Heaven knows I've tried. I wanted them to put a full sign on the door back there <laughs> early tonight, but they wouldn't do it. So. Linda <laughs> Ross is always trying to start something. <laughs> Old me and all that. She said, you'll be up here tomorrow night. <laughs> We have a lot of fun. By the way the land is laying, I think I'm right in saying that over the next 
dreams here will be home. It's a straight and narrow highway, no detours and no byway, and over the next hill we'll be home. When we get there. he loves his wife. More than 25 years ago, maybe more than that, I was pastoring up in Illinois. Seemed like one Saturday morning. Uh, I was going out the garage there and here come a car come flying in there. It was Doyle Pruitt. He'd been out in Missouri in revival and he stopped. I said, boy, boy, it's good to see you, Brother Doyle. I said, come on in and uh, they'll be cooking up something to eat here in a little while. No, he said, uh, listen, I said, what is that? He said, I hear, I hear Linda calling. You remember that? <laughs> I'll never forget that. He said, I just stopped by to say hello, and man, we love you, but I can hear Linda calling, and I'm going to tell you, I heard him, as he, he was gone, boy, like that. <laughs> Brother Doyle, we love you, and most everybody here has heard you preach, and Brother Doyle pastors of Kingsley Avenue, Free Will Baptist Church in Greenville, Tennessee, and uh, he's done great work for the Lord. He's been faithful. Uh, through the years to the Lord and I think most everybody's probably heard him by now but he's an outstanding preacher and a great man of God and he's my friend and my brother pastor you come at this time and share with us what God's laid on your heart brother Doyle Amen. first of amazing grace yeah. <laughs> amazing grace
seated. I've enjoyed the choir singing this week and I've enjoyed the spatial singing. All of the, the spatial singing and the choir been been a blessing to hear you. And uh, Brother Tommy, we we go back many years. Our friendship began uh, back in the late 70s. Back in the late 70s. And we've been friends and I can say that Brother Tom has been faithful uh, to the Lord and uh, churches where he's been, love him and um, I thank the Lord for his friendship down through the years. I was just thinking about some little, little thing I heard some years ago. I heard about a preacher that preached and uh, Went back to the door, shake hands with people as they come out of the, the service. A uh, lady came by and said, that's the greatest message that I ever heard in all my life. Dwight Moody couldn't have beat that. Uh, Charles Spurgeon, uh, best I ever heard. He bowed his head and said, now Lord help me not to get puffed up. <laughs> and then another and the two come by and the lady said, if you call that preaching, my 10 year old son could beat that. <laughs> and he said, Lord help me not to get puffed down. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, I don't want to get puffed down or puffed up either one. Do you? How many is happy in the Lord? Say amen. amen. Been a joy to be with you this week. And uh, we look around the congregation, we see people that we remember years and years ago. And uh, it's just a joy to see you once again. And uh, I'm honored to have Linda with me this week. Years ago, we wasn't able to take her with us. She stayed home, took care of the children, but uh, these days we uh, go together just about everywhere we go, and I'm glad to have her uh, with me in the service. I'm going to ask you to stand tonight and open your Bibles uh, to the book of Zephaniah. Now, this is one of the little books over in the Old Testament. Some of these little books are a little bit more difficult for me to find than others. But in order to find the book of Zephaniah, uh, just turn to Matthew chapter 1, and then just begin to turn back a few pages. You'll come to Malachi, and then there's Zechariah, and then there's Haggai, and then you're going to find Zephaniah. And we're going to look this evening in chapter 3 of the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 3. And we'll begin our reading in verse 14. And the Bible says, Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not thou, fear thou not, and design, let not thy hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love, he will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee. And I will save her that halteth 
and gather her that was driven out and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again even in the time that I gather you for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the reading of your precious word. Now we stand here tonight in need, great need of a touch from heaven. Please, Lord, for Jesus' sake, Anoint this service, these lips of clay. Help us to share the word of God. May we all be blessed and strengthened. And should there be an unsaved in our midst, may they be saved if there's one with a need. May that need be met. We'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And you may be seated. Our text tonight in the message that we hope to be able to preach is found in verse 14. Sometime back I was reading uh, just my uh, uh, devotional and I was reading here in the Old Testament and I came across this passage of scripture and it just seemed that the Lord just squeezed my soul. When I looked at verse 14, when the Bible says, Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. I'm going to say to you tonight, dear friend, the Bible tells us that we ought to be a happy people, a, a joyful people. We ought to be a people that's doing what the Bible has to say here in this verse 14 in the book of Zephaniah chapter three. You know, we live in a time when there are so many people that have little or no joy in their soul. Many folks who claim to be uh, saved seem like many have lost uh, their joy and happiness. The joy bells are no longer ringing in their souls like it one time did. But I'm gonna tell you tonight, uh, I wanna share some things with you why we ought to sing, why we ought to shout, uh, why we ought to be glad, and why we ought to be rejoicing. Look tonight as we study here and preach from the word of God. Christians can rejoice first of all because we have the assurance of the Lord's unfailing love. Aren't you glad tonight that we have the assurance of the Lord's unfailing love? In Jeremiah chapter uh, 31, we find in verse three, where the Bible spoke through the lips of Jeremiah and said, the Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Folks, I want to tell you tonight, uh, the Lord's love toward the church uh, and the born-again believers, uh, it's not a fly by night, it's an everlasting love. Yeah. Thank God for John 3, 16. What a wonderful verse that is where God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. Listen again to John chapter 13 and verse 1. The Bible said the Father having loved his own which were in the world. He loved them unto the end. Folks, I listen here in the book of Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 14. Sing, O daughters of Zion, shout, O Israel, 
Be glad and rejoice with all thy heart, O daughters of Jerusalem. Folks, I'm going to tell you tonight, uh, there are some reasons why we ought to be a happy people. Uh, you know, I read not long ago uh, about a great woman. She was the wife of, of a great preacher. Uh, her name was Suzanne Wesley. And you know, they tell me, according to the story in history, uh, she was the mother of 17 children. 17 children. She loved her children. Somebody asked her one time, said, Miss Wesley, uh, tell me something. You got 17 children, uh, and which one of them uh, do you love the most? You know what her reply was? She said, I love the one that's sick the most, that is, until he gets well. Amen. Oh, thank God. God, and then she said, I love the one uh, that's gone, but I love him till he, when he comes home. Friend, let me tell you tonight, uh, our Savior, the Lord Jesus, he has loved us with an everlasting love. We ought to be rejoicing and praising his high and his holy name. Uh, folks, because of, of the assurance of of the Lord's unfailing love. Over in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, listen to what the Bible says in this passage of Scripture. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the perpetuation for our sins. Folks, would you agree with me? We're far too quiet in the house house of God. Would you agree with me? We ought to be hearing more amens. We ought to be hearing more praise the Lord. We ought to be hearing more people say hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm going to tell you dear friend that I praise God because he looked down upon me and loved me when I was unlovable. Praise his I'm holy name. What should we be doing in these last days? Uh, well, Zephaniah said, Sing, shout, be glad, rejoice. Uh, you know what we ought to be glad about? We ought to be glad because our names uh, are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, when we get saved, by the grace of God, let me tell you, our name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, I didn't get a birth certificate till I got ready to go in the armed services. We was born, most of our family, the children was born at home. Didn't even have a doctor. This the little lady in the community that delivered babies. And we just, so we just didn't have a birth certificate. But when I got, got ready to go into the military, and I had to produce a, a birth certificate. So we went through the procedures, uh, used the old family Bible and the testimony of my mother and sent down the Nashville and they gave me a birth certificate. But oh, let me tell you something. When I was born again, my my name was recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. There it is. Through the ruby red blood of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, you do what you want to, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord because my name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Christian can rejoice, first of all, because they have the assurance of the Lord. Words 
unfailing love, folks. He don't love you just for a little while, then turn his back upon you. I'll tell you, dear friend, he loves you when things is going well. He loves you when things are not going well. Praise God, he loves us with an everlasting, unending love. Praise his high and holy name. Let's give him glory and honor in the house of God. Secondly, tonight, Christian can rejoice because in addition to having the assurance of the Lord's unfailing love, we have the wonderful promise and the guarantee of the Lord's sufficient grace. God in heaven knows that we need the Lord's sufficient grace. Over in 2 Corinthians chapter nine, I find these words recorded in 2 Corinthians chapter nine and verse eight. The Bible said, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you. I was with an old preacher several years ago, and he said, Preacher, do you know what grace stands for? G-R-A-C-E. I said, Well, what does it stand for? G-R-A-C-E. It says that means God's riches at Christ expense. Amen. God's riches at Christ's expense. Folks, that's what grace is. It's the unmerited. It's the unearned. I'll tell you, grace and love of Almighty God. Oh, praise the Lord tonight. I'm going to tell you, church, listen, we're living in the last days. Don't be surprised what you see from here on out. I wish I didn't have to tell you this, but there's going to be even a greater falling away in days to come than they have been in days gone by. Folks, we live in that time. It's been prophesied through the scripture. But I'm gonna tell you, I've got my mind made up. I got my feet on the rock. And I'm gonna tell you, I've got my eye on the goal. Amen. Praise his holy name. I'm gonna depend on God's sufficient grace grace. Uh, folks, I'll tell you tonight, God's able to help us. Back in 2011, uh, in December, but soon be seven years uh, ago, I fell down in Knoxville, Tennessee, going to visit my sister, Rainy Day, and I come in out of the rain, open the big glass door to go in the high-rise apartment where she lived. My feet just flew out from under me. I fell and broke my ankle. But you know what? God's grace was sufficient. I preached for 10 months, sitting behind the pulpit for 10 months. How did I do that? The same God that saved me by his grace enabled me to preach the word of God, help funerals in wheelchair. Let me tell you, dear friend, tonight, when God said my grace is sufficient, you can set your clock for that, amen, because his grace is sufficient. Folks, I'm preaching on what we ought to be doing in these last days. The side of what, what old Zephaniah said in verse, mark that verse. Read it often in Zephaniah 314. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Folks, let me tell you tonight, uh, if God give me many more years, I still wouldn't get the story told about God's marvelous and wondrous grace. The Lord could have got somebody far better than me, better equipped, 
more education, but I'm going to tell you, I don't understand why he laid his hand on me, but one thing I do know that he did. Amen. Praise his high. We have the guarantee of the Lord's sufficient grace. That, that somebody said, there's singing grace, serving grace, living grace, and dying grace. Folks, I visited an old man uh, laying on his deathbed, and he was so weak he could hardly lift his arms. And to prove to you how God keeps his word and his promises. When I think about dying grace, that dear old Linda Mem member, Mr. Bowen, lived down below the church. Sweet old gentleman. I, uh, he will lay over at the Sweetwater Hospital. I went over to see Mr. Bowen laying there on his deathbed. You know what he'd done as he lay there? You know, before I lived, he lifted a little feeble arm and he began to sing, my heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling home. <laughs> he couldn't hardly lift.